Gospel Fame's TV channel. This is Marriage Spices Special Edition. Today we are going to be discussing something special, something very interesting, something that is going to bless you as a married person and as a single. And what is it? Divorce. Wow. The rate at which we are experiencing divorce in our own days is alarming. As in the statistics is going up day by day. What is the cause or what are the causes? What are the way out of this pandemic? Should I say pandemic? Yeah. And today in the studio, I have amazing guests, two great women of God. One is representing a generation and another one is representing another generation. By the time they introduce themselves, you will know what I am talking about. Let me start from my left. Mommy, can you please introduce yourself to our viewers at home? Mrs. Jacqueline Ejimofo is my name. Alright, Ma, how long have you been married? I've been married since 1985. I'll be 36 years in marriage by the grace of God this year, November. Wow, wow, wow. 36 years in marriage. Oh my God. Oh, hallelujah. Please, can you go to the comment section and congratulate mommy for 36th anniversary of her wedding and claim the grace also Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. 36, wow. That means we are here for so much to gain today from our wealth of experience. And to my right is... I am Bolaji John Ayedu. Oh, so... Pastor, Mrs., for how long have you been married? Um, our marriage will be 15 in September. Wow! Praise God! <laughs> Please go to the comment section and type congratulations on your 15th wedding anniversary. Uh, she will be representing uh, a younger generation, not because her marriage is so young, but because she ministers among youths. She, I mean, she has a lot of experience working with the youth. Now, this world, this pandemic, divorce, particularly in Christian homes, because that's our focus. Mama Ijimofo, what can you say is responsible? Um, okay, let's, let's even relate to your time. You've been married for 36 years. It's a word. What was divorce like then? So, um... In fact, in my days, it was what I would call an anathema, mm. abomination. It's not, it's not, it wasn't heard of in Christendom, you know? You, you don't hear of divorce. You hear of divorce in the world. Why? Mm. Because, because of our mindset about marriage then. Imagine our mind was something that was once and for all. You do it once and you do it for all. Why? Because we, we, we believe in a foundation. You, you don't just get married. One, we're talking about Christian marriage, so you must be born again, mm. really born again. You know God. You understand who God is. You understand God's purpose and program for marriage. Mm. And by the time you are going into marriage, you have prayed through and you, you, you believe God led you. This is God's mm. leading for you. Mm. Even in those days, it was not so much about flamboyancy, what you have or what you don't have mm. and you know all those things. It was about God's purpose. Mm. And you go into it by the grace of God because you go into it, the foundation from the Lord. You stand on whatever you need. You trust the God that ushered you into marriage to see you through. Mm. And because of that, by the grace, no, it's not as if we didn't have issues or we didn't. I've been counseling. I've been a marriage counselor for several years. It's not as if we didn't have issues. But you discover that by the time issues come up and you counsel and you fall back to God, people are willing to go back to God for solution. Unlike this, they go and still counsel. These days, you, you people go into marriage with an option. Mm. And so even when they have issues and they come for counsel and you give them counsel, they are still stubborn and they are still telling you, well, if it does not change, mm. if she does not change. But in those days, it wasn't like that. Mm. In those days, once an issue is, is, is raised and the, the Bible comes into it, the scripture comes into it, you, you are brought face to face with God's word. Mm. God's word controls you. God's word calms you. 
no matter what, God's word is the final verdict on any matter. Mm. So these are the things that actually helped us in those days. The fear of God. I mean, no matter the situation, when God's word comes up, you know you have to bow. Mm. You have to bow and turn to God for grace, but not anymore. Mm. These days we have issues. Even when you present God's word to people or matters in marriage, they are still adamant. Mm. If she does not change, I will do this, I will do that. You are not God. Mm. So these are the issues that we really had. The things that kept us then and now for my generation is the fear of God and the hold we have on God's word and mm. the trust and belief wow. we had in God. And God saw us through, mm. through thick, through thin, through difficulties. Today we have testimonies. Mm. Mm. Praise God. Praise God. Awesome. That's, wow. that's, 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 that's yeah. awesome. Uh, you know, um, Mama said God's word, having regard for God's word. And you see, in God's word, marriage is covenant, not mm. just a contract. So uh, when the word of God comes life to you, you've got to bow. You've got mm. to just obey God's word. Uh, Pastor Mrs., you, you are here representing a younger mm -hmm. generation. You know, you work amidst uh, young people, you know, people who are planning to get married, mm -hmm. people who just got married. Uh, is the situation the same with their own time. Divorce was a taboo. Yeah. How is it like now? Uh, you know, like she said, she just blessed me during that session. You blessed me, ma. <laughs> you see, the, the thing about our generation, like she rightly pointed out, is the submission to God mm. that is being overshadowed by messages like let nothing control you. Mm -hmm. It is your life. Mm -hmm. You can do what mm -hmm. you want. So truly speaking, I can say that our generation is more affected because of the values being passed down mm -hmm. to us. Mm -hmm. It's different. Mm -hmm. The values being passed down to them at that time is not as quality as what is being passed down to us now. Because the truth is, if we look at our time, most you find most people together mm. bearing together mm. not not because they do not have differences but because of the long run mm. they want to stay there mm. but now we now have been given options mm. like if it is not working you walk away That's it. Okay. so things like that have informed the increase that we have in our own time mm. yeah thank you very much uh, pastor mama you said something that uh, you you, uh, from what you said, uh, you've been born again for a long time to the glory of God. But we still have people in your class who were not born again as at the time they got married. Mm. And their marriage still worked. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Can we say there is societal influence that helped them? Because I know quite a number of grandmas and grandpas today who were not born again and one way or the other they endured the marriage even though some of them what you notice is that uh, maybe by the time one of the children gives birth and he travels abroad <laughs> the woman just take the opportunity so. to escape <laughs> and uh, you understand could it be societal influence or culture or what do you have to say about that? One? I think it has more to do with the values, like she said, mm -hmm. that, that, we were, that were incorporated into us mm -hmm. at that time. At that time, whether, if I could go back to even my own parents' time, where my parents were not really born again until later, later on in life. Mm -hmm. But my mother endured so much, she, she stayed for such a long time in the uh, in, uh, in my father's house as a wife. Mm. Eventually they actually separated but they came back together in the long run. Mm. And the, the point is the values taught them were that you are a woman. Once you marry, your husband is your husband, he's the head. When you get there, whatever you face, you, you live with it. Okay, Mama, if I may ask you, what was your mother's occupation then and what was your father's occupation? Good. <laughs> you see, that's where the issue came. My father was a professor. Oh. And my mother was uh, equivalent to a doctor then. Wow. Equivalent to. 
So I came from an academic background, kind wow. of. So in those days, you know, and it's like <laughs> that kind of background. They go outside, they come in, they, you know, that kind of thing. So they, are, they, they, were, they were more exposed to the Western world. Mm. But that's why I mentioned they separated for some time. Mm. And came back. Mm. But normally people of their, of their keda, people of their age, you wouldn't hear of such. Mm. But because of their own exposure, you know, the Western life kind of affected them a bit. But the truth of the matter is, what, what helped me was I became born again at a very early age. Mm. And I came to understand the actual principles of the Bible as far as marriage is concerned. And I came to understand that, you know, when the Bible talks about marriage, God said, um, um, two of you will come together, two shall become one. Mm -hmm. I understood that it takes, and God has to open mm -hmm. our eyes to understand marriage. That's the basic thing. When you understand God's mind of marriage, um, the issue of divorce is not it's not an alternative. Yeah. When you look at the scriptures right from Genesis, we discover that when the Bible said the two shall become one, marriage is about complementing, not compatibility. Mm, mm, mm. The world sells compatibility. The Bible states complementing. Complementing is I have what it takes to make you complete. That's mm, not what the Bible says. Mm, mm. So so normally at the beginning of any marriage you might find out that the, the two partners are very different. Mm. Very different, and in fact, those things that could that are meant, for example, in my home, I am the go getter, I'm the, I'm the pusher, mm. my husband is the melancholy, but you see, he has control over me. Mm. You know, I, 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 I move from start moving fast, he just grab and say, Hey, lady, take it easy. <laughs> That's nice, and because of my understanding of the scriptures, once my husband says, Stop, I have to stop. It doesn't matter. I've risen to a very high position. Mm. He knows me. Mm. But my husband must not tell me stop on any matter. If he tells me stop, it doesn't matter who you are. Wow. I must stop. Why? Because I understood what God said about marriage. What is in me will make him complete. What is in him will make me complete. That's complimenting. Mm. Now, but the world is selling compatibility. Compatibility is where you have two or more things staying together without schism, without quarreling, without trouble. Mm. It's not possible in wow. Okay, uh, before I come to you, Pastor Mrs. Mommy, uh, what if we have a situation where we have an unbelieving husband? Mm. You understand? When daddy says stop, you stop. Because if you have an unbelieving hus husband, there are times you want to do God's will and he says stop. Mm. Now, that, you see, that becomes another issue. Mm. If you are a child of God, a, a woman who has a relationship with God, with an unbelieving husband, you need to be very prayerful. Because the Bible said, Categorically in 1 Corinthians 7 that you don't have to go away from an unbelieving home mm. if, he, if he's willing to live with you But the truth of the matter is you must be very prayerful because your husband is your husband unbelieving or not That's right <laughs> Unbelieving or not mm. So if you're a believer and you're married to an unbeliever that the foundation is in your rock Well, if one way or the other mm. well, It's possible that both of you married as unbelievers one became a believer. Mm, yeah. But the truth of the matter is the scripture has room for that. You must submit to your husband no matter what. Now, as a non-believer, because his ways are not the ways of God, you submit to God. Mm. And that is it. You see, when you submit to God as a woman, it's like God is right before you, a huge figure. Your husband is in front of you. Are we together? Uh, you know, you are, you are, God is behind you. Your husband is in front of you. God is standing behind you. Now, by the time you submit to your husband, who does your husband face? God. Mm. That's it. Mm. So if you can, if you have a knowledge of God like that, and you're married to an unbeliever, the truth of the matter is, by the Holy Spirit, you will literally control your husband. Mm. 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 By the mm. Holy Spirit. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, Pastor Mrs. Now, yes. I want to come to you. Oh, the rate of divorce in this generation is on the increase. Yes. Now, can you trace it to you know, exposure, education, mm -hmm. because, thank God, because mommy has uh, parents who are mm -hmm. helmets. But most times when you see husband in those days, mm -hmm. the man is working, mm -hmm. the woman is not working. Uh, the woman is enduring so many things because society will tell her, you have to endure because of your children. Yes. If I have a semi, I have um, one experience, not directly my family, but my friend, the father was so bad that the man will bring a concubine to the house and send away the wife. 
Why we have, we have to go and look for where to sleep and come back the following morning? Mm -hmm. And then they have to tell the woman, don't leave because of your children. <laughs> uh, actually, today, they are together, even though there are some scars that we can point to. Now, today, you are a doctor, your wife is a lawyer. You are earning so, so, so amount of money, she's also earning so, so, so amount of money. Uh, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the society is also, particularly with due respect, the Western world, they are, they are you know, mentoring a lot of uh, people now that uh, marriage is not by force. If it's not working, it's a contract, you can just opt out. Can you say societal influence uh, has effect on this uh, issue we're talking about? Yes, societal influence does have a lot to play in it but we must understand that the originator of a thing mm -hmm. has a final say mm -hmm. on that mm -hmm. you know i was speaking somewhere and i told them i said can you bring something to me that is older than scriptures that talks about marriage mm. if you can find anything older than the scriptures that mm. can authenticate that that's the source of marriage, mm. then I may listen. But so far we know that the originator of marriage is God. Mm. So he determines how it should be. That's run. right. Western culture is not the source of marriage. That's right. Social media is not the source of marriage. That's right. So, you know, if I, I cite this example, if you go to the, the store and you buy a Samsung television, you shouldn't read the manual of Panasonic to run your Samsung. Mm. So when you want to talk about marriage, it is important for us to know that there may be inputs from F from different places, mm -hmm. but the final authority should be God. Mm. So, so social influences come in. You see, when we talk about this issue of divorce, like she said, you can't just pick divorce in isolation because marriage is not between angels, it's between mm -hmm. human beings. Yeah. Now, when... And that's why human beings, I keep saying, human beings are not dropped. They come through families. Mm. So when we are talking about divorce, let's go to the roots. Mm -hmm. It comes from families. Like the instance you cited, a boy or a daughter that grows up in a house where the mother is being abused mm -hmm. or where the father is irresponsible, mm -hmm. along the line, there are things that come up on you based on association mm. because that child has been introduced to such pattern the child picks such pattern and that's where the responsibilities of parents come to play mm. that you understand that you are not just living for yourself you are living a life of influence mm -hmm. that your children will copy so if you if it has not been sold from the family to the children the pattern will not be seen in the children yeah. Yeah. if the value has been built that God's word is what we build on, not on social media. Mm. The child understands that I do not learn values on how to run my life from unbelievers. Yeah, yeah. I learn from the word of God. Yeah, yeah. So that will also have a place. So if we are talking about divorce now, we are talking about the foundation. Mm. The Bible tells us that which one of you wanting to build a tower will not first sit down, that's the word, mm. sit down and count the costs whether he has sufficient mm. to build, mm. less he's not able to finish and then people. So let's, that thing, it should start from the foundation. Awesome. What is the source of your knowledge on marriage? Mm. Mm. Because that source will determine what you want to give to it, mm. how, how much of yourself you are willing to put into it. Mm. If the source is right, that's what the Bible tells us now that a good tree will bring forth good fruit. Yeah. Mm. It but, cannot be a bad mm. tree and bring forth. So if mm. the source has it. problem, mm. you can't just, to begin to, you know, when you see a tree and it's bringing up mango fruits. In fact, the reason why you call the tree mango tree is because it's you because see the mango fruit, yeah. not because of the shape. Yeah. That's why you look at the tree. If it doesn't look like a mango tree, you say, ah, this, these leaves don't look like mm. a mango leaf, but you still call it a mango tree because of the food okay now okay can can a marriage come to a state of humanly unbearable 
Mm. Can it come to that stage? Yes, remember we were talking about Christian marriage. Yeah. Okay, when you talk about Christian marriage, Christian marriage is not just a marriage that's conducted in the church. Yeah. Christian marriage is between two Christians, mm. people who are really born again. And they want to talk about two Christians, you're not just talking about people who have just confessed Christ. When you mm. say, I receive Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior, the active word is my Lord and personal Savior. When you say somebody is your Lord, is your God. Yes. Everything he says, you say yes, sir, to it. Mm. So when you say Christian marriage, you're talking about two people who have surrendered their lives to Christ. Not just received Christ, mm. where most people are stopping today, but surrendered. And to the point where you say, God, I'm ready to go all the way. Now, it is very possible for a marriage to get to the point where it is physically unbearable. That's why we have abusive marriages today. Yes. And then when we talk about divorce, uh, the, 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 the problem we have with divorce is God said, I hate divorce. That's God's stand on divorce, Malachi chapter 2. God said, I hate divorce. And God cannot come today and love divorce. So divorce is for Christians. God did not give us the option of divorce. In Matthew 19, that scripture where people normally quote, mm. uh, God, uh, when the disciples asked him, uh, why is it that mm. uh, Moses, God, he, he said, in the beginning it was not so. Mm. He said, it, in the beginning it was one man, one wife, you live together. He said, but because of the hardness of, of your heart, you were stubborn. Moses had to find a way out. Are we together? In fact, to the point that by the time they finished that discourse, the disciples said it's better that a man should not marry. Mm -hmm. Because they came to understand that this thing, <laughs> when you put your head inside, yeah. you can't escape it. Mm. Go to First Corinthians 7. Categorically, Paul said, I said this to you, not I, but the Lord. A man should not leave his wife. A wife should not divorce the husband. If she don't, she should stay single till she reconciles. The issue is... Hmm. Even That's stay single. Mom, I'm sorry for cutting you. Are you now saying se separation can come in? Because, you see, I, 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 I okay. I'm coming there. I'm coming there. I'm coming there. I'm coming there. You see, the, that's why I said it is possible for a, a house, a, 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 a marriage to become unbearable. We have abusive marriages today. Now, it is possible for Christians to be, to be asked to separate. If I have actually counseled people to leave for some time, mm. where you know that this is heading towards death. Death. Are we together? That's right. You say, stay outside. But that, as far as God is concerned, is still not divorce. That's right. The problem is you cannot remarry because mm -hmm. the That's Bible the calls everybody who who, who uh, uh, divorces and remarries an adultery. Mm. So you can't remarry. Even if situations become so tough that you have to, to move out, you have to stay aside. You before God, you are still one, you are still married. As far mm. as God is concerned, you are the two shall become one. Mm. The Lord God cannot separate you. Mm. And so, even if you decide to stay apart, you cannot mm. remarry. Mm. That's the issue. Mm. Are we together? Yeah. But yes, it is possible yeah. for a situation to come, particularly where they are backsliding. That could be they are no more, they don't fear God anymore. People have decided to go to the world, and people have beat. We have heard so many cases. Mm. The lady who was killed by her husband. The husband I think is on death row, I don't know whether he has been. If she had, you know, she was complaining, I don't know whether you know that story. Mm. She told the pastor, she told people this was having, they kept told her, keep enduring, keep her. She ended her life. Mm. If somebody had told their sister, mm. step aside a little bit, you are not divorced, you're still your husband. Mm. But you, this house is not conducive, step aside. Probably should be alive today. Mm. So, sincerely speaking, we should be wise. In today's day, the devil is active. Mm. So you it's see a active. place where not everybody who says I'm a Christian is a Christian. That's people right. go to church, but are they really born again? That's the point. You know, we have a lot of people go to church. Mm. That's the problem. In homes, you, you, when we go to church, we smile. Even pastors and there, we smile. Everybody thinks we are holy, but go and find out what's happening in the home. Mm. Where you discover that thing is becoming unbearable, a man will hold his wife and press her neck. Mm. You know that kind of thing? It's better to tell the lady sister with this situation. I think she separate a bit. Let the air clear before you come back. But you cannot be married because as far as God is concerned, divorce does not stand. Thank you very much, man. Mm. Wow, it's been awesome. God's foundation stands sure. Yeah. Stands sure. And um, we can't just change it. Amen. Amen. So, Pastor Mrs., because, uh, <laughs> because of time, we're, we're landing up now. Oh, what's your advice to young people out there, you know, about the concept of marriage being a covenant or a contract? Because if you go into a marriage with either of the mindset, it will mm -hmm. determine the answer. Mm -hmm. What's your counsel? 
the things I feel that our generation needs to know is that, even among Christians, I mean, particularly Christians, is that the fact that a marriage is prophesied does not mean it will work itself. Even prophecies are worked out. Mm -hmm. Marriage is work. No matter the revelation you see, you need to work your marriage. Yeah. Marriage is not a destination. Marriage is a journey. Mm. Mm. There is something about destination. It's that people settle. When you get to where you are going, you just settle. You feel there's nothing else for me to do. And that's where the pitfall is for some of the marriages we have. They've gotten married. They don't feel like there's anything they can do again. Mm -hmm. You're already my wife. You're already my husband. You hear women say, I can dress anyhow. Who is looking at me? The guy too is saying, that. See, why do you need gift? All the one I bought for you before mm -hmm. we got married. So that is where the work comes in. You don't want to divorce. Although you are tongue-talking, you are believers, do the work. Mm -hmm. Be diligent. Your marriage is your business. The Bible says, see as thou a man diligent in his business. Mm -hmm. You know that. And then the issue of preparation. Please prepare before you go into marriage. Don't look at the anko and the I love you, I love you, the lovey, lovey, the romance that other people are doing and just say you want to jump. Age is not a reason for marriage. Mm -hmm. So if you are going into marriage, prepare for it. I ask people, how many books have you read on marriage as, as a guy? How many marriage meetings, seminars have you been to? Who are you accountable to? Who talks to you? Who do you listen to? Those are the things we need to get right. The mindset. The mindset according to scriptures. How willing. You see, submitting. The Bible says submit. That scripture that people call their wives, submit to your husband. There's a script, there's a verse preceding it. The yeah. first thing is submit one yourselves to one to another. Out of reverence. Out of so the wife, the it says, wife, submit yourself. So you must be willing to give it what it takes. Do not come into marriage with the mindset that if it's not working, I walk away. Put your mind that this thing is going to work and I'm going to give it what it takes and then keep upgrading. The fact that you have read about marriage does not mean you, even when you, even in the marriage, you get to some things you need to upgrade. People in business do it. When they get to a point, they say, okay, this thing is not doing as we plan. They want to go and read up. So keep reading, keep upgrading, right. keep being accountable, keep learning. All right, on a final note, now I have a question for Mama. We have this Christian couple. Uh, then the man started to misbehave. Then... He, he went so fast and so bad that he left the house, go and marry another woman, settle down with that woman. Now, what is your advice for the woman that is left alone? Do you, will you say that she should remain single? She should not move on with her life? What, because we are not just talking from the head. No. Yeah. I can even give you several other scenarios like that. Okay. Mm. But you see, um, the truth of the matter is the love of God cannot be broken. And uh, it's just unfortunate that we have situations that go out of the norm. Mm. You know, out of out of the norm. Mm. If, if, out of the ideal. If everything were ideal, it would be okay. But you know, the word of God stands in the midst of things that are not ideal and things that are ideal. Mm. That's the word of God. Mm. So I will advise the woman to stay by the word. What does the word say? The word of the word say, if she's truly a Christian, she should not give up on her husband. I will give you some true life stories. She should not give up because Romans chapter 7 tells us something. Verse 1 to 3 that a woman whose husband is alive, he, he remains her husband as long as he's alive. Now the scripture does not say he remains her husband when they are living together mm. or when they are apart. Mm. So as long as he is alive, I wish you could just even read that scripture. Romans chapter 7, the scripture says, the woman is married to a man as long as he is alive. From verse 2, the Bible says, For the woman which had an husband is bound by the law to her husband, so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she's loosed from the law of her husband. So, so long as he liveth, whether they are together, or they are not. Mm. She's bound to the husband. If she's truly a Christian, I will advise her to keep praying. Hmm. Yes. It, look, let the man go and marry five other wives and stay with them. Keep praying. Why? 
she's the first wife, she's the legal wife. Every other wife is not a legal yeah. wife as far as God is concerned. Mm. If it's way that she came in ignorantly and she was not a legal wife, she will have to leave. Yeah. According to the law. Yes, mm. she will have to leave. But she's the first wife, she's a legal wife. She should stand in her place and pray and trust God. It doesn't look, it doesn't matter how long it takes. God will do it. I have a story. Let me quickly end with that. A, a, a lady got married to a man, just like you said, they were Christians, and if, if something happened, the man went uh, astray, I would call it a word, I went without official leave, mm. went away, <laughs> and lo and behold, you know, they're messing up. The sister was encouraged to keep on praying, keep on praying. She kept on for several years. Unfortunately for her, she joined the church. When she joined that church, the pastor said, what are you waiting for? Find a girl like you. Ah, you can't see your husband. Look, move on with your life. Move on with your life. And she had been praying. So lo and behold, there was a, a, a man in the church, a widower, who, elderly man. He said, go and keep a bad company. Mm. And so under pressure, the sister did. And she had first set of children with a man, twins. Immediately she had those twins. About a year later, the husband came back. He was born again. The Holy Ghost had touched him. He had repented. He came back and said, please, I'm sorry. He said, I'm ready to adopt the children. Come back. Mm. But you know, it was too late for her. The situation was so that if you leave Baba, you will die. Mm. You see, the truth of the matter is, I would rather not get to heaven and find out that the action I took was wrong. Mm. I would rather get to heaven and find out that the action I took was in excess. Mm, Are we together? Ah, right. And you didn't really need to go that far. Mm. But since you did it, no mm. problem. Mm. So I'd rather get to heaven and discover mm. that I punished myself mm. on death and this I entered. Mm. Mm. Than to find out that the action I took on death mm. and the council of mm. setting Just. ministers mm. was contrary to the scripture because you won't get there. Yes. Mm. That's the problem. Mm. So I would advise that mm. woman, woman continue to pray. Mm. May I say, sir? Mm. Marriage is not the final stop on earth. That's mm -hmm. right. I'm telling you. It's a, marriage has stages. We don't even have time to discuss stages. your marriage. What we're talking about here is the initial stage. The time comes, children come up, you grow up with the children. The children leave the house. You are left with your husband alone. If you leave certain loopholes, loopholes. cuckoo's nests, that's where you will have problems. You hear of uh, uh, people abroad, even here, 60 years, they are divorced. Ask yeah. me, what are they going to do at that time? Because they are loopholes. Mm. A time comes when by the time you have increased the year, you begin to depend on each other. Yes. This is our own foundation growth that you need to put right. I might want to the, to people listening, mind is not all about just the beginning. Mm. That we all want to dance, dance, dance. Mm. Mind is a lifetime. It's a long mm. long. And there are different phases. Mm. You get phase one right, you pray into phase two. Yes. You pray into phase three. Mm. Pray into phase the summary of the matter is till death do, do you pass. Yes. Oh, marriage is not just about emotion, the attraction. Because there's there come at a time when there won't be there's nothing around this in your body. That's it. Okay. King David. King David. With all his misbehavior. Mm. Put a young mm. lady. They brought mm. a fine oh, girl. Oh, not my God. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Mm. May we learn from the Bible. <laughs> amen. <Yes>. Amen. <laughs> what is tacking people's head? Wow. The time will come when hey. they bring it to you on a silver platter. You can't. It's coming mm. to you. Mm. Mm. So may God help us. Wow. On this note, we are going to be coming to an end. And you see, there is this key word from what our guests have been saying. Please bring yourself under the judgment of the word of God. Bring yourself, let the word of God be the judge, yes. not the society. Yes. Don't be, uh, you know, Western world did not initiate mm. marriage. It was God who instituted mm -hmm. marriage. Please don't let, the, the, mm. there's a saying that the source of everything is the sustainer thereof. Mm. If God is the source of marriage, is the one that sustains marriage. And the way he sustains marriage is by yes. his word. Please yes. let the word of God guide your home let it guard your marriage. Anyone at the verge of giving up or divorce, we encourage you. Please don't. Please don't. God will come true for you. Yes. Amen. Before you go, please don't forget to click the red button, subscribe, share this video, send in your comments. You may even have questions. You may have contrary opinion to what you have said. You may want to educate uh, our viewers more. You can please do that on the comment section. The Lord bless you and keep your home. Amen.